This is Memorial Plaza, an area on campus where tribute is paid to those who have fallen in the line of duty, and it serves as a focal point for veteran ceremonies here at Eastern Kentucky University. Pete Harry says he doesn't really think of himself as a saddle maker, but instead as more of a problem solver. Whether he's building a saddle for a hard to fit horse, designing equipment for a disabled rider, or repairing an antique saddle for a museum collection, this U.S. Army veteran is always looking for ways to improve the process and the product. There was never a time in my life when I, I was not interested in horses. I've loved horses since I was big enough to remember. I loved all saddles. I loved the equipment. And even today when I watch a Western movie, I spend more time looking at the horses and looking at the equipment than I do listening to the storyline. And probably in the late 70s, I decided that I was gonna do this full time just because I like creating things. And this was just a natural outlet for me with the horses. A lot of my work is self-taught. I grew up around this business, but I was never satisfied with what I knew. I always wanted to know more. Consequently, I went to classes on anything that I could find that was related. The skills that I started out learning were things that I could apply to my saddle business here. I was already doing a little bit of silver work at that time, but I really wanted to learn how to engrave. I went to Kansas, to Emporia, Kansas, to GRS Engraving School. As soon as I got back, I kind of forgot about the silver for a while. I started engraving guns and uh, doing that type of work, which led to uh, gunsmithing school. Uh, one thing just kind of leads to another. Saddle making is a dying art. Uh, saddles are basically made in factories, just like automobiles. They're assembly line produced. Very few custom saddle makers who actually do everything from start to finish right in their shops. Factory saddles are built on standard trees. In other words, they assume every horse is exactly the same. And that's not true. Just like people all have different conformation, they look different, saddles fit differently on different horses. You want something that's not only comfortable for yourself, you want it comfortable for the animal. And let me tell you, if a saddle does not fit a horse, and you, you can ride it, and he will perform, but he's not going to perform to his maximum. He's only going to perform to the point that it starts hurting him. But basically, you have to have a good tree like this to even start on a really good saddle. So if you start with a good foundation, you're good to go. First thing we're going to do is take a look at the horse, because you can look at his confirmation and tell what kind of confirmation he has. Then you're gonna start fitting trees to him. And you can take this bare tree and set it on his back. It will either fit or it won't fit. I do uh, fiberglass molds of horses' backs for horses that have irregular problems. And I modify these bars to fit them. When you get into custom-made saddles, you've got a piece of equipment that takes good care of your animal and it takes good care of you. Being a veteran myself, I used to do all the repair work for Fort Campbell Riding Stables. They have a huge riding stable at Fort Campbell. I worked with uh, Fifth Special Forces, teaching them about packing with pack horses and how to pack, what to pack. And this was before they went into Afghanistan because a number of these people over there in Special Forces are riding horses. And it was really interesting working with these people because these were fellow uh, special ops people that I was working with. A lot of these people had no horse knowledge. They didn't know one end of a horse from the other. And to see them get on a horse and try to lead a train of five or six horses behind them, it was a disaster. <laughs> but just like anything in life, you learn. Over the years doing this, I have developed a lot of techniques in working with leather and doing different projects with them that if I didn't pass them on to somebody, they're going to be lost. I have a school here where I teach saddle making. I have people come from all over the world. I've had them here from 
just about every state in the United States. The school here that I have is VA approved and I get a lot of veterans. A lot of these veterans coming back now are combat veterans out of Iraq, out of Afghanistan. And uh, to be honest with you, a lot of them are suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, it's a common problem. And there's just something about working with your hands that is soothing. Some of them, they really get wrapped up in it by the time they're finished. I've had several of them come in here and they've taken every class that I've offered. I love being able to pass this on. Once you learn to work leather, you can basically do anything in the world with it. I started doing the leather covered bottles, which started out just as a fluke. I wanted to see if I could cover a bottle in leather without breaking the bottle. And uh, so I've done that. And then I started to decorate them with silver pieces, brass pieces, beadwork. Uh, I have restored these antique trunks. I've actually built reproductions of them. And I like them with the Native American Indian design on them. I do a lot of museum pieces. People literally ship this stuff in here from everywhere. And you look at it and you think about what it looked like when it was brand new. And if there's enough of it left that you can find the patterns off of it and things, and to restore it just exactly like it was when it was brand new, and it's fully functional. I never intended to build side saddles. It started out just restoring a few of them. I ended up uh, building all the saddles that one of the companies in North Carolina sold. They closed their shop uh, maybe a year ago. And now I've taken on building them for a company in New Jersey that basically took over from the company in North Carolina. There's just a real satisfaction in something that you created. You're never bored. It's always something new. There's always a new challenge. Once you start and it becomes an addiction, you're never satisfied. You always want the next one to be better. And you're always looking to create something that nobody else has done. The black silver mounted saddle that I have out front that you were looking at, that saddle is 45 years old. And it still looks like new. Kind of nice to know that you're building something for posterity that will be here long after you're gone.